And now, from the Career Tech Studios in Stillwater, here's your host, Rob McClendon. Well, when lawmakers convened this past week at the state capitol, they began a new legislative session without the huge budget gaps they've had to work with for the past couple of years. With one of the nation's fastest growing economies, revenues into Oklahoma's state coffers have exceeded most expectations. And while the state is still far from flush with cash, the talk on Lincoln Boulevard is what to do with the new income. Do we cut taxes, put it away for a rainy day, or restore state services that have been cut by over 20% in the past couple of years? And it's the first of those questions, should we cut taxes, that we will focus on today. And here to start us off is our Courtney Dehoff. Well, Rob, nobody likes taxes, or at least nobody I know likes taxes, but we do all enjoy the services that they provide, whether it be my education at a state university or the road you drove in on today. And perhaps the hottest issue up for debate by the state legislature is whether or not to do away with Oklahoma's personal income tax. In Oklahoma, I believe, stands in testament to the fact that low taxes, limited government, Fiscal discipline is a recipe for job creation. In her State of the State address, Governor Mary Fallon outlined a plan that would eliminate state income tax for Oklahomans making less than 30000 Cut it more than in half for Oklahoma families making from thirty dollars to $70,000 a year. And for those making more than $70,000 a year, the tax drops to 3.5%. I believe our plan is a game changer for our state. It's a job creator, and it provides broad-based tax relief to the middle class without starving state government and without hurting the poor. Fallon says she hopes to pay for the cuts by eliminating loopholes in the tax system, streamlining government, and capitalizing on potential economic growth. So today, I am asking our lawmakers to join me in an ambitious and exciting undertaking, the passage of a bold tax reform plan that will represent the most significant tax cut in Oklahoma's history. And by the reception she received, that is what many state lawmakers plan to do. If we really want to be the best state to do business in America, and I don't see why we shouldn't, um, we need to do something about our income tax rate. Senator David Holt and 26 other sponsors are introducing bills to phase out the personal income tax. What I really want, we got to get it down, we got to start lowering it, um, and then we can keep talking about phasing it out, I think, as the years go on, even if that's not what we do this year. Last year, state income tax collections made up 36 percent of the state's general revenue fund, tax dollars that support state services like schools and bridges. We need a tax system that works for the people of Oklahoma, that doesn't burden working families, and that doesn't serve as an impediment to the businesses in this state. You've got to identify the problem before you can start throwing solutions. At Representative that. Scott Inman opposes the doing away with the personal income tax, but understands why Oklahomans may be attracted to its elimination. No one wants to pay income tax if they don't have to. Uh, matter of fact, most of my constituents in, in Dell City and South Oklahoma City would love to pay no income tax. Yet paying lower state income taxes would not necessarily lower Oklahomans' overall tax burden. That plan in eliminating uh, in, in starting to, to, to gradually reduce the income tax in Oklahoma would actually raise taxes on over 65 percent of the people in the state. That is because under the governor's proposal, Oklahoma would pay for the tax cuts by eliminating 39 tax credits along with personal exemptions that 80 percent of Oklahomans claim. Including the possible reduction or phase out of the individual income tax. Representative David Dank led a legislative task force targeting tax credits and believes that by eliminating many of these, the state will be able to lower its income tax rate. Nobody in this legislature would like to get rid of the income tax more than me. I, I had a lesson years ago when J.C. Penney Company moved to Dallas, Texas. I was on the board and the executive committee of the National Retail Federation. And I asked Jim, I said, how come you're taking this huge operation, all these high-powered jobs and that, to Texas instead of Oklahoma, to Tulsa? And he said, David, the only way I can get my brain trust out of New York City, my marketers, my merchandisers, my legal people, 
all these people, these high paid jobs, is to go to a state without an income tax. But what is good for high wage earners may actually hurt the middle class. Oklahoma Commerce Department economist Deidre Myers. We want to look at the overall tax burden that a householder or a business would have. So it's important to look at things such as property tax, sales tax, along with income tax. Take our neighbors to the south, for example. Texas is one of nine states without a state income tax, which means Texans fund their state government with a much higher sales tax, not to mention their higher property taxes. Texas property tax is on average three times higher than an average home in Oklahoma. They actually pay, if you have the same house, you, they own a home, they actually pay 30% more in overall tax burden because of the higher property taxes in Texas. According to the governor's office, Fallon's income tax plan will cost the state about $1 billion in revenue of the state's $6.4 billion budget creating a hole some fear cannot be plugged by the cost-cutting measures the governor has suggested. I definitely think that you hurt the cities and the chambers of commerce. I think it makes it very, very difficult on them um, because there's a shift. There's a tax shift, and who's going to pick that up? Well, if you shift all of that tax to a business or, or some other type of entity to try to make up that revenue, that, that's not business friendly either. Jeff Mills is executive director of the Oklahoma State School well, Board and questions why state lawmakers are wanting to change our tax code when increases in Oklahoma per capita income is better than all but one of the states with no income tax. From the information I've received and the, the reading I've done, we're beating Texas on the economy. Um, you know, Oklahoma is doing quite well. And uh, we're doing it with an income tax that may be a slightly higher, but when you look at the overall tax of our citizens, we're 37th in the country. Yet with multiple tax cutting plans on this spring's legislative agenda, odds are some type of income tax cutting plan will emerge. But before it does... So I just think we really need to do our homework as we move forward. Senate President Brian Bingman. We, I just want to be very cautious because once you reduce the income tax, we're never going to go back. We just got to make sure that uh, we're offsetting it with other income. We're going to consider any and all ideas with the end goal of, of reducing our state's income tax, but ultimately, collectively, we will decide how to accomplish that goal uh, in a way that is in the best interest of our state. Speaker of the House Chris Steele agrees we must go slow. We're very interested in reducing our state's income tax, uh, ultimately maybe even phasing it out, but we do believe that we need to take a very methodical, logical, steady approach. That will not harm the middle class, but will encourage economic growth. Governor Mary Fallon says her goal is to reduce the state's personal income tax to around 3 percent over the next several years, which is less than half of what it was just a few years ago. You know, I think it's interesting watching your story that the higher up the lawmakers are and leadership positions, the more cautious they are about reducing the state income tax. Well, it certainly makes sense because at the end of the day, those are going to be the guys that are sitting down trying to make the budget balance for next year. Thank you so much, Courtney. Now, when we return, I will sit down with an economist who says when it comes to reducing the state income tax, not only do we want to go slow, we may not want to go there at all.